Welcome back, everyone, to Grand Tactician, The Civil War. It is May 1863, and we're going to see if we can't wrap this thing up. We're getting so close. The uh, Confederates are at 30 on their na national morale. If we can drop it to 24, the war is over. So we're going to start making our moves uh, as soon as we can get supplies. Disaster at Fort Polk. No way. They actually defeated us there? I cannot believe that. We had the numbers. They've retaken Richmond. All right. Well, that's a problem. Uh, so we'll see what that does to his morale, retaking Richmond. But in the meantime, as soon as we get a base of supply here uh, in Chattanooga, we're going to make a move on Atlanta. And I'm also going to try to wrap up making a move on Vicksburg just as soon as I possibly can. Uh, oh, we've already got our unit there. I didn't realize I had actually made that move on Vicksburg. So we're, we're, uh, are we in possession of Vicksburg? We are. So we've taken Vicksburg. We've taken Jackson. Uh, let's go ahead and move. I don't remember moving the block, the Gulf blockading squadron up there. So I feel like some things have happened that I did not do. Like, I don't remember sending my men on Vicksburg, but maybe I did. So we're going to move, uh, the, the Navy down to deal with him there. We're going to move on Atlanta. Uh, I'm going to make sure we hold on to Knoxville. We've got the men there to do that. All right, we've issued war bonds, uh, which means we are now ready to choose something else. I don't know if there's anything in particular that I'm worried about here. Um, military three. Ab oh, let's go for abolition of slavery. All right, that'll uh, oh that'll boost CSA national morale by ten. Let's not do that. I don't want to give him anything that's going to help his morale when we're this close. So we'll go military. Okay, now that we've taken Vicksburg, uh, the next step here, uh, first of all, is to resupply the army because we've got a food issue here and we're only at seventy nine percent on supplies. So uh, first steps are to build a fort so we can hang on to it. Build some supply depots. And then from there, we're going to have to start moving on New Orleans. I need to make a move uh, to cut off the Confederacy by taking the largest city in the Confederacy. Okay, so the, uh, the force of McClellan with 40,000 men and the Army of Kentucky with 35,000 men uh, are ready. We're going to send Sherman to Atlanta. Uh, it seems only right that he would be the one to do it. I'm actually going to move McClellan over to Decatur, Alabama. See if we can't draw some of these Confederate armies there. And we have to wait to move back on Richmond until the entire Army of the Potomac is in position to be able to do so. Uh, which means that the Second Corps, for example, needs to get its readiness back up. It looks like it's good. Magruder is going to make a move toward Washington. Oh, well, maybe not. He's going over to Winchester. Okay, Sherman's making his move. I'm upgrading these supply depots. Glorious victory of Baldwin Ferry. Uh, so we are dealing with the Confederate Navy as he's trying to make inroads toward Vicksburg. That's not happening. As soon as we get the fort and the supply depots built there, we're going to start moving down river. All right, Vallandigham ex expulsed. Uh, so uh, Clement Vallandigham was the leader of a group known as the Copperheads. They were the anti-war Democrats. And Vallandigham was a congressman from Ohio. Uh, oh, this is interesting. So it looks like McClellan is going to run into the Confederates here in northern Alabama. Uh, Stewart's Corps mostly, but others as well. So McClellan's 13th Corps. Here we go. All right, so we're expected to attack the enemy on this one. He's probably somewhere on the other side of Swampy Creek, which we're going to want to get across as quickly as possible before dealing with the enemy. So I'm going to I'm going to load up everybody on the road and try to get him across. Uh, we'll start with the cavalry up front so he can slow down any movement. Uh, we got a hill here, so really we want to try and engage him up here as close to the top of the hill as we can. We don't want to be attacking up this hill at all. Okay, so I think we're in the clear. Uh, looks like the Buckeye Bandits are going to be able to move up all the way to here without any sight of the enemy. I briefly caught sight of a brigade 
over here along the old market road but he's obviously back pretty far so let's go ahead and push the buckeye bandits uh, i'm going to send a cavalry unit up this way uh, and then we're getting into line along this road for now and we'll give our forces a chance to sit tight for a little while there while i get them organized and i figure out exactly where the rebels are Okay, we hit the end of the day, and we have sight of one Rebel Brigade, Lee's Brigade, but we have a chance now to redeploy. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to get Rousseau in here on the left at that hill. We'll get Hancock's brigade, Brigades here in the center for now. They're broken, and I'm not sure why they're showing as broken. Let's take a look. Alexander Hayes. Oh, we still have guys with mixed muskets. That's not good. Spurgeon's Roughnecks look. Oh, they're broken. I don't know why. All of these units are broken. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Maybe supply has been an issue. I don't know. So we'll have to pretty much sit tight for a little while while we give them a chance to recover before we make any kind of an attack. Because that attack would just probably not go very well. We'll get Hannibal Day's artillery up here in the center. Let's throw this. You know, they've still got orders to go left. I think we'll go ahead and keep those orders. So before anything even happens, the Confederates are showing with 2,200 missing, and I'm showing with 700 missing. So we have to keep that in mind when we start seeing casualties happen. And he does have an estimated 12,000 man advantage, so about, about a third more men than I have. So let's go ahead and move the Buckeye Bandits out a little further here in screening. All right, we do see some enemy over here as well. Rousseau's the only uh, only division that's stable at the moment. Well, Steele's division's stable too. Um, Rex's Raiders are nervous. Carolina Loyalists are good. Now we've got another mixed musket unit there. Everybody seems pretty good on this one. And you can see he's dug in pretty good there. So let's go ahead and move Russo's division that way. I'm going to push Hancock up a little bit and see if we can't maybe draw him out. Let me look at this ground a little better. I want to bring my guns up in this area. And I'm going to bring steel around here. If we can isolate... If we can just kind of hold off with Rousseau against these guys and maybe isolate part of his army and destroy it over here, that would be ideal. So he's moving, uh, shifting his line to, to face us over here, but really this is just a distraction force to keep him from reinforcing these guys over here. As soon as Hancock gets in a position, Hancock's confident now. Frederick Steele's uh, division is stable, so we're good there. Let's go ahead and start making our move. We're going to bring steel around. We've got firing happening between skirmishers now. Alright. Got these guns firing. Let's try to get these other ones in position to be able to do the same. All right, so we've got from right to left uh, John Dix's Third Brigade. We got the Carolina Loyalists here, Rex's Raiders there. I've got the Buckeye Bandits here in a support role. I may actually swing them around this way. Uh, let's go ahead and start pushing Hancock forward. That's uh, the Armagh Irish, the Spartan Brigade, Spurgeon's Roughnecks, and then the Fourth Brigade. We're going to push with full, two full divisions on what amounts to looks like a brigade and a battery. I'm trying to get some of these other artillery units in a place where they can actually fire. Skirmishers are engaged over here, and then these skirmishers are about to be. Hopefully we can start doing some damage to that battery. Alright, now 
we're putting some fire on Gordon's battalion. Just keep an eye out over here, make sure they're not advancing. All right, let's push steel forward. Keep the pressure up on these guys. I'd like to take that battery out. All right, what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna start moving some of these guns over this way. These three inch ordnance rifles, I'd like to be able to get them to start shelling these guys for long position. So what I want to do here is I want to get the Buckeye Bandits out and around him on the right side. We're going to pull the skirmishers in. He may be coming in to attack me here, which is fine. I'm all for that. Go for it, dude. Got some 12 pounder Napoleons here. Let's see if we can get them somewhere in a place to support. All right, we got seven full brigades dealing with a brigade and a battery. I can't imagine Lee's gonna hang on too long in this situation. Gonna go ahead and send Hancock skirmishers out again. Get fire on him from multiple sides. Looks like we wiped out the battery. Let me take a look here. All right, cool. Guns are pretty even now. Remember, he did get reinforcements, so we need to keep an eye out. That's probably what these guys are. They look like they might be coming in for an attack. Once we drive off Lee, we'll push up with the rest of our army. All right, Hancock, let's push in. Let's uh, let's force the issue here. Two full divisions against one brigade. And actually, we could ride in now with the Buckeye Bandits on this side really put the squeeze on him. All right, there's a lot of activity happening over here. Our guns are getting into position. Yeah, you're in trouble, Lee. broken. Can we finish him? Send in the calf. Run them down. Let's get these guys to surrender. In the meantime, let's send Hancock over here. Give him a little surprise as he's sending men down into this funnel here. Come on, Buckeye Bandits, don't let them get away. All right, let's see what happens here. Our skirmishers are engaging him at a distance that'll hopefully keep him away keep him uh, from being able to deploy a little closer. Hancock's going to start moving his division into position. 
And then we'll be able to do the same before long with the other division, Steel. Kind of surprised, surprised Lee's brigade hasn't surrendered yet. His casualties are mounting big time. You can see the numbers now. He had 2,200 to start, so it's still like 3-1 casualties. Okay, uh, he's starting to move the, the balance of his force down this way. My cavalry's engaged. They're taking some heavy casualties. Why is Leggett not got skirmishers out? Hancock's starting to get in position. He's only lost 240 men out of 11,000. So let's go ahead and get his skirmishers out. And as soon as he's in position, we're going to advance maybe up to a line about right here. We should be able to start firing. Uh, it looks like Lee's brigade disintegrated. I didn't see a surrender notification. We're going to move Frederick Steele into a reserve position for now in behind these two divisions that are on the front line. All right, Hancock, let's send out the skirmishers. Oh, we already have skirmishers? They're just way back there. Oh, jeez. They didn't advance with the rest of their men. All right, he's starting to advance. First Armagh Irish getting there fire going on him. Wickham's Brigade's backing off. Spartan Brigade's holding here. Spurgeon's Roughnecks. They drove back the Rebels pretty quickly. So far the Battle of Huntsville, Alabama is going pretty well, even though we're outnumbered. I think we outsmarted him. He's kind of jumbled up over in here. I'm going to pull back Russo's skirmishers. We're waiting for Steele's division to get into a reserve position. My three inch ordnance. Let's see. We, we have suffered some losses. I want to get them on counter battery fire. Let's start targeting the enemy guns a little bit. these ones too. Those rifled guns are good for targeting the enemy batteries. Alright, situation is this. 8,000, eh, really about 6,000 casualties for the enemy. So still about 3 to 1. We've taken out 35 of his guns. I'm pretty content to um, shoot it out for a little bit here. I'm going to go ahead and push Rousseau forward, though. And I'll bring Steele up into a reserve position behind him. Showing us a minor victory right now, so we get a couple of these guys to break and we'll be in good shape. 78th Ohio. Getting in on the action, as is the Smoky Mountain Brigade. 78th Ohio is behind this building, which is making it a little tough. They're behind a fence here. They're still kind of bunched up. Let's see if we're having any luck with neutralizing the guns. We've taken out 40 guns now, so we are in, going in the right direction. Darius Couch wounded. Over here on the end. Let's go ahead and tell Rousseau to bring in the sides. Go ahead and attack. So he's going to bring in the mixed musket units on either side, which is fine. Get them in a close range where they can actually be effective. I say we break 
maybe two Confederate brigades, and this one's over. Let's get a little aggressive here. Uh, let's go ahead and tell Hancock to move forward. I'm just going to give Hancock an attack stance. Trust him to do this right. We'll see if that trust is well founded. And I'll go ahead and do the same for Rousseau now. Oh, couch just broke. Well, of course, they lost their commanding officer. They don't have good weapons. That's not good. You know what? We might be able to get the Buckeye Bandits out here. These guys are far enough back. Let's see if we can't go in and disrupt these guns a little bit. Speaking of the guns, we've taken out 50 now, so counter battery fire is doing its job. This, this might be a little reckless. But I'm feeling, feeling aggressive. Get in close and then we'll charge. Hit him. Took some casualties there, close range. That's to be expected. We're gonna run him down. Beautiful. Of course, they're going to take flanking fire over here, which is a problem. Okay, they took out that battery. Let's go ahead and dismount. Start firing on Steele's battalion. If nothing else, this keeps them from firing on my attacking infantry. At least temporarily. Division's advancing now. The Irish, the Spartans. We're inching toward victory. Oh boy. Oh, whoa. Where'd all those guys come from? He had a whole mess of brigades back there. He's pulling out. That could have been really bad if he would have brought them in, but he just was not aggressive enough. Mount up, Buckeye Bandits. Mount up. Oh, he went in. He just nailed that Confederate Brigade. Nice. Alright, that was a beautiful victory by McClellan in northern Alabama. We'll see what the final numbers look like, but uh, it turns into a major victory. So that's going to be another Confederate morale hit. That might drop them under 30. If we can go back and take Richmond, we'll see where things stand. Take Atlanta, go back, take Richmond. We might be able to wrap this thing up. 4,400 casualties, 15,000 for the Army of West Tennessee. Okay, Sherman's taking Atlanta. Don't burn it. Atlanta is ours. Let's go ahead and build up supply. And we're going to put a fort there too. All right, so the uh, national morale for the Confederates is down to 29. I'm pulling McClellan back. There were some more armies that showed up over there and... Honestly, there's no really, not really any reason for me to get crazy there. I'm going to try to keep the Army of the Tennessee together. We're building our supply base and everything we need there. And I think we're just about ready to make a, a move back on Richmond. All right, Army of the Kanawha. Oh, um, interesting. Where's that happening? 
That's over here in southwestern Virginia. Honestly, I'm going to let that auto resolve while we make a move on Richmond to try and take that back. So let's go ahead and start sending Sheridan, Sumner, Wilcox. We're going to send just about everybody. And we'll send the Army headquarters as well. And I'll hold the First Corps back just a little bit. All right, the uh, Army of the Kanawha uh, was defeated there, but that's okay. They they kept them busy while we make our move on Richmond. So that's the main thing. Army of the Mississippi is in contact with the Army of Indiana. That actually looks pretty good for us there. I'm actually going to auto-resolve that one as well. Where are we at on numbers now? Still 29 for the Rebels. Okay, that worked out. Glorious victory at Munfordville by the Army of Indiana. Uh, I want to go back down here for a second and take a look at Memphis because it looks like Pelham's taken Memphis from us, so we're going to have to go back and get that back in a minute. Um, but at the moment, I'm just working on my supply base here in Vicksburg. I did not put any fortifications in Memphis. Wasn't too worried about that. Harney's actually 100% supplied, so... What's down here? Robertson, 8,000 men. Army of the Trans-Mississippi. Alright, let's make our move on New Orleans, the largest city in the Confederacy. We can take that, we can take Richmond back, which we have. He's down to 27. I think taking New Orleans might do it. We'll see. We've won a naval victory, sank one of the enemy ships uh, in Chesapeake Bay. We're gonna sit tight on top of Richmond. Uh, I've sent the first corps out here just to grab the supply depot, grab Charlottesville. And we are making our move down the Mississippi. The Cairo Squadron is right outside of Baton Rouge, which we're going to end up taking first. There's a glorious victory at the Mississippi. All right, Baton Rouge, let's take it. We'll start there. We'll see what that does to the Confederacy. I doubt that's enough in and of itself. Oh, it is! Taking Baton Rouge did it! The war is over. Confederacy sues for peace. The rebellion crushed. All right. Let's take a look at the final numbers then. With malice, With malice toward none. My favorite Lincoln speech. His second inaugural. In the right, as, God as God gives us to see the right. Let us strive on to finish the work we are in, to bind up the nation's wounds, to care for him who shall have borne the battle for his widow and his orphan, and to do all which may achieve and cherish a just and lasting peace among ourselves and with all nations. Gosh, I love that speech. Love it so much, and I wish he would have had an opportunity to see that happen. But he was gone a month later. I think we get to see the, the final numbers here in the epilogue. The Civil War was at best barbarism. Let's take a look. Here we go. We ended up with 392,000 men in the field at the end. We took 176,000 casualties to his 279. Um, he actually had a bigger navy than us at the end there, which is pretty interesting. And a fairly good size army as well. But in the end, we won. I, I think the campaign has come a long, long way. And I'm interested to dive back into the Confederate campaign. I think it's going to be a significant challenge this time around because the AI has gotten a lot better. Uh, so we'll take about a week or so off. Um... So, uh, after that, 
we'll go ahead and start getting into a Confederate campaign. So I'll go ahead and make a post over on Patreon for those of you who are eligible for units. And uh, you can start requesting your Confederate units. And we will start in about a week. Thank you guys so much for joining me on this campaign. We're going to do it all again one more time with the Confederates now that we've got a good AI and we've got a finished product. I'm excited. See you soon.